Hey YouTube, today I'll be testing two different 3D printing file formats, STLs and 3MFs. Is the newer really better? And also I'll be sharing five things I wish I'd have known one year ago when I started 3D printing. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Will and I am a 65 year old man that's now learning Fusion 360 to be able to create his own STL files to sell as a print on demand items on Amazon and other types of platforms like that. So over the past uh, few months I've had uh, quite a few comments about 3MF files and why I don't save them that way uh, in Fusion. I uh, just started taking up Fusion about two months ago and I've always saved it as an STL file and um, I've never tried it as a 3MF. The STLs were created or designed in 1980s and then the newest files, the 3MFs or the 3D manufacturing format uh, is what that stands for, came out in 2015. And the newer files actually are able to hold more data uh, along with colors and materials and all the other stuff that may come along with the file uh, where your STL file would, would just hold just the, the, the drawing itself. Uh, so what I thought I would do is just kind of run test prints. Uh, the same item I designed in Fusion, a little box, and then uh, run on three of the same printers, which I have uh, three of the uh, Centauri Carbons uh, that I had purchased at the same time. Uh, so the serial numbers are very, very close, so they're pretty much identical. Uh, my filament, I'm using some Sunlu Pet G. Um, I bought it in a lot of four, and it was in a, a single pack wrapped up and then wrapped up again uh, individually, and so they're all the same lot number. And uh, with that, I think I would just try to see if I could print one as an STL and one as a 3MF and see if there's a difference in the print. So I thought while running those two, I would run another print since I had another roll of filament and uh, another printer available. I would run it at a 0.12 uh, layer height with the 3MF file to see if it did give any better print. So I've already got those printed up and I guess we'll take a look at those. We'll start off with the STL file. This is at a 0.20 millimeter layer height. Um, looks like we got a little bit of stringing going on. Little hairs hanging off of it here. Um, it might look better after post cleanup, but uh, the layer lines are pretty good. Thing with Pet G is it is so shiny. But for this test, that's probably pretty good. I want to see what it looks like. All right, so um, let's check out the other file. See if it's any different from this one. All right, so this is the 3MF. It's also at a 0.20. Uh, looks the same. It's got a little bit of herring coming off of it, a little bit of strings. Um, look, looks like I had a little lifting. I didn't even see that. Uh, that's the first time I've ever had anything lift off of any of these plates. But uh, all in all, the print still looks good. Um, like I said, a little bit of stringing, which is causing the to look like that in the camera. But we'll hit it with some heat and see if it cleans up a little bit. And so let's go over to the other one. This one is at a 0.12 millimeter layer height, and it's a bit cleaner. Um, of course it would be, right? And if I slowed it down, I'd probably get it even cleaner than this. Um, very little stringing on it. Very clean for, for Pet G anyway, right? 
Yeah, so I, I don't think there's a lot of difference in filing. Of course, I really didn't think there was going to be, to be honest with you. Really? I mean, it's just a data file, right? It just holds data, holds more data. And that's what the whole 3MF is all about. Um, but they turned out okay. Um, like I said, I had some stringing, uh, but I don't know. Both of them were consistent. I mean, it, uh, so both of them were doing it. But after cleaning them up, they, they look really nice. I mean, this is the other one. Yeah, so. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, uh, STLs or the the 3MFs, it, which really doesn't matter. I mean, STLs have been around since 1980, so um, there's no reason to change it if it you don't need it. I mean, for what we do, right? Really. Thank you so much, YouTube. If you made it this far, if you would give us a like and a subscribe, it really helps my channel. It's uh, our 90-day um, anniversary today. I've been on YouTube for 90 days. That's unbelievable. And as far as starting a business and doing um, Fusion. Actually, I started Fusion a little bit late because I didn't really think I was going to get into it too much, but I really do like it. Next is the five things I wished I'd have known <laughs> when I first started 3D printing. Um, it took me a few months uh, to get into it. I, I watched a lot of videos, decided which printer I was going to go with. I wanted to go as simple as possible, something that I could open the box and start printing, so I went with bamboo. And at the time, uh, that was the only thing that was doing it um, like that. And since the Centauri's and a few other ones, uh, AnyCube's got one, and um, Flash Forward. Um, a couple of other printers came out, really nice printers from what I've seen. Uh, but five things I wished I'd have known was I should have bought an AMS system when I bought my printer. I waited probably five or six months before I really reached out and just decided to do it and go get it. Uh, once I got back, I realized that it just opens the door to whatever you want to print in any way. Uh, before I was just printing in different colors and also in the silks which re look really nice but you have a lot more control of what you're printing if you have an AMS system so it's like uh, getting a new video game and having everything unlocked uh, you can just go to print and, and not have to think about what if so I do like my AMS system even though I don't use it for multicolor I usually use it just to keep filament running so I don't have to keep changing it out uh, which leads me to number four, which is a dryer. You definitely need a dryer. You, you can try to keep it in a plastic bag with a silicon, uh, but a dryer really makes your prints consistent. Um, I've found that uh, sometimes that the silicon doesn't do the job or the bag's not really airtight or whatever, and, and I get a bad print. And I wonder if it's it's the extruder or something else, uh, but usually it's just a filament. So, But when I, I uh, dry it for two to four hours and then let it sit for an hour, it's always consistently the same way. And that's across the board. It doesn't matter if it's bamboo, uh, iligu, uh, creality, uh, even sunlu. Um, I don't have a problem with it after I've dried it. Uh, number three. Number three is buy your blacks and whites in lots of four or just buy them in a lot. Uh, you you want to get the same lot. Uh, the color of it, it varies. I've had uh, one kind, uh, one color of black and from bamboo I believe and um, I, get, I can see I needed more, so I ordered it, and it came in, and then I loaded both of them up in the AMS system, left it to be there overnight, and come back the next day, and the vase is two different colors and can't use it. So 
I suggest that you buy your blacks and whites in lots. If you you know buy three or two, um, I know Amazon sold the Sunlus in lots of four, and they came in a sealed pack of four that you opened up, and it had four sealed packs inside of it. So that, that they're pretty consistent that way. Um, number two is this extruder tool. I was using the guitar string cutoff that came with the, the printer. Uh, these are about $12 on Amazon. I'll put a little link down below um, so you can click into it, but it's really nice. I, so if you got a clogged uh, extruder, especially for the bamboos, I would take this, unplug it, pull it off, I slide it on top of it, and I take my little heat torch and heat it right here, and that would heat up this thing, and it I could just push it down, and it would just clean out the nozzle. And I, I would spend an hour or two or trying to do cold cold pulls on my extruders for the bamboos uh, when I first started, uh, but this was the best tool I bought since I've started uh, 3D printing. And the number one thing about 3D printing that I didn't expect uh, and that absolutely makes me a joy is YouTube. I did not expect to start a channel that would gain a little traction and get me to where I am, uh, where I am in 90 days, where I've already gotten um, uh, 3,000 subscribers. I've got almost a hundred thousand views on my on my videos and that's just amazing. Uh, I'm just a 65 year old man who just started tinkering on YouTube with a cell phone and that which just brings me to the point that you can do the same thing. Uh, it's not that hard. I've actually had a couple of people reach out and ask me to make a video of how I started doing all of this and how I got to 3,000 uh, subscribers in just 90 days. So I may do a video of that, but if you want me to uh, you know, tell you, I'd be glad to do that. Just reach out to me and uh, or we'll make a video doing that. But until next time, uh, YouTube, I, I really don't know what I'm printing, but I hope you're printing it with me because I'm really enjoying myself. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Thanks.